Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers, and this is Biblical Insights. The title of our video today is, What is Love? You hear a lot of people talk about love. Love makes the world go round. Love is all you need. All sorts of different things about love. Songs about love. Movies about love. Books about love. But it's amazing how many people don't seem to really understand what love is. And so that's what we're going to talk about in our video today. At one point during his ministry, actually it happened twice during Jesus' ministry, uh, he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Now, in the Jewish culture where Jesus lived, the commandments from God, the law of Moses, uh, were the most important things. Uh, God had given a law, 613 uh, laws in the law of Moses, and it was designed not just as a religious law, but as both religious and civil. It was the law that governed their entire society. They were not a democracy. They were a theocracy. In other words, God was in charge of everything, and he gave them laws about how to live and how to be a society. And so they would uh, often discuss, sometimes they would argue, but you know, they would discuss what is the greatest commandment. Of those 613, which one is the most important commandment or the greatest commandment? And that's what Jesus was being asked to comment on this uh, idea that they argued about all the time, what is the greatest commandment? Now, if you, if you take that same question and, and you transfer it from their society into our society today, the question would be, what's the most important thing there is? You see, because we don't live in a theocracy. Uh, there are very few uh, attempted theocracies in the world today. Uh, most are either still some form of monarchy or a parliamentary form of government or a totalitarian dictatorship or uh, a democracy of some sort. And that's what we are here in America. We're a uh, representative republic, actually, but democracy comes into play in that. That's how we elect our officials that represent us, okay? I don't mean to get too political here, but uh, it's important that we understand the difference between a theocracy, which is what Israel was, uh, um, was and what we are uh, today, we, we refer to ourselves mostly as a, a democracy. And so the greatest commandment question doesn't really work in our society. The better question for us is what's the most important thing there is? Okay, well, what is the most important thing there is? Well, when Jesus answered the question, uh, and that's, you know, lots of people will come up with different kinds of answers about what's the most important thing. But the answer we're concerned about is, is what did Jesus say? And he said, the most important thing there is, is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then, even though he wasn't asked what's the second most important thing, he added that just because he wanted to say it. So he says, the second most important thing is to love other people as much as you love yourself. So when Jesus was asked about the greatest commandments, the most important thing there is, he, he said it's, it's loving God, number one, and number two, it's loving other people. The two most important things there are both had to do with love, loving God and loving other people. But if you think about that and, and you realize, you know, but there's an awful lot of people out there who don't really understand what love is or how love works or how love functions, uh, it then becomes important to discuss the idea of love. What does it mean to love? How do you love? And, and, and there's a, a text in the New Testament that helps us with that from the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, that's what we're going to read here so we can see what Paul has to say about love. So we'll be reading that from the Simplified New Testament. This is the fourth edition. And uh, listen closely to what Paul says about love. And, and I think you'll see something 
very interesting that I think a lot of people don't really understand. <clears throat> Paul says, here is what a loving person is and how a loving person behaves. A loving person is patient and kind. A loving person is not envious of other people. A loving person does not boast and is not proud. A loving person is not rude and does not seek his or her, her own interests. A loving person is not easily angered and does not keep a list of wrongs done to him or her. A loving person takes no pleasure in evil things, but finds joy in truth. A loving person protects and trusts those he or she loves. A loving person always hopes and never gives up. Love is so powerful that it never fails. That's a, a, a very interesting passage about love. When I was uh, still serving as a minister and I would be doing weddings quite often during the wedding ceremony, I would read this passage to remind people, not only the young couple that was getting married, um, but uh, the people in attendance to remind them what love is. And if we stop and think about the things that Paul said there in that text, and we, we say, yeah, well, what kind of things is it that he's talking about? What he's talking about, and this is important, this is the key, is he's talking about actions. He's not talking about feelings. You see, the first thing we think about when we think about love is how we feel. And, and we think about being a young person and being loved for the first time and all the, the fluttery feelings and emotions and everything that goes with it. And they think, oh, I'm in love. And, yeah, okay, yeah, that, that's a part of, of love. That's one aspect of, of love, especially for young people. But generally speaking, the highest form of love has little to do with feelings. It has to do with actions. It has to do with how you behave. Now, in the New Testament, there are several different words that are translated as love. And, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're reading English and it talks about love, there's no way for you to know which of those Greek words are in play. In fact, the Greeks had five or six different words that all get translated love. The word that Paul uses here in this text is the word agape. And that's the highest form of love in the, in the Greek mind, the way the Greeks thought. And as I said, it, it doesn't have much to do with feelings. It has to do with behaviors. It has to do with actions. And, and this is what Jesus was talking about when, for instance, he said that you must love your enemies. Well, how can you have, you know, warm, tender feelings towards somebody that, you know, maybe is, is, is trying to destroy your business uh, or, or hurt your family, uh, or, or something like that, and they're, they're your enemy. How can you f feel loving toward them? Well, it's not feeling. It's not feeling. It's the word agape, and it has to do with how you behave toward them. You can love someone, <coughs> excuse me, even if they're trying to hurt you, um, even if you don't feel good about them, you can behave properly toward them. You can uh, be concerned for their welfare. You can forgive them if you find that even though they've been mean to you and terrible to you, they're thirsty. Give them something to drink. If they're cold, give them a coat or a blanket, something to wear. Um, you know, you, you can be kind to people uh, even if they have not been kind to you. Well, see, that's the idea behind loving your enemy. And so when Paul here talks about love and he lists all these different things that love does and that love doesn't do and that loving people do or don't do then he's really getting down to the the most basic aspect of love which is how do you behave toward other people first how do you behave toward god if you love god with all your heart soul mind and strength then how do you behave toward god how do you interact with god right? That's number one. And number two, how do you love other people as much as you love yourself? Well, it's, it's not a matter of how you feel about them. It's how you behave toward them. 
And that's what Paul is talking about in this text. And, and this is the challenge for Christians when, when we are supposed to be loving people. Love your, your family, love your neighbors, love your uh, fellow Christians, right? It's how you treat them, how you behave toward them, how you interact with them. That's what love is really all about. So what I would like for you to do, what I would challenge you to do is uh, mark this text in your Bible and every day for a couple of weeks, read it and, and remind yourself about this list of things that are loving behaviors or that are not loving behaviors. And so you don't do these things. Paul puts both in the list, right? And, and so uh, maybe you sit down and write them out into a list and then, <coughs> excuse me, ask yourself, how good are you at doing these things? Which of these things are you really good at? And when which of these things, eh, you're not so good. You need to work on them, right? And then pray about it and ask God to help you become a more loving person. That's really the key to Christian growth is knowing what your strengths are, knowing what your weaknesses are, and knowing where you need to make improvement and then asking God to help you and then thinking about it every day. Am I making improvement in this? And over time, you will begin to change. You'll begin to grow. You'll begin to improve and, and to be different and to be better. And you'll be growing in God's image and likeness and you'll be more like God. And that's really what the goal of the Christian life is all about. So, Think about these things as you go about your day and, and your week. And as always, read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless.